Let's take you live to Mombasa County where the government spokesman Eric Kiraida is currently addressing the media. That one of the advantages of the railway over the bus is that you can spend your night there. You take the rail in the maybe at midnight, take your sleep, come to Mombasa, do your touring for the day, and the evening you come, you go back and sleep in Nairobi, and hopefully within a very short time in Kisumu. But why are Kenyans not celebrating? Some people have cited the cost. And if you go down a little bit in history, you recall that the railway, which started becoming obsolete almost 40 years ago, and which we are replacing now with a modern one, the Indian coolies, African workers, and a few, even Muzungus, at least two of them, became dinner for lions. They were eaten by wild animals. You know, it's not very perceivable now because we are the dot-com generation, but that was it. A lot of communities further deep to the west were only used to caravans of slave traders from the coast. Uh, and therefore, when it reached the Rift Valley and, and, and other places, the natural instinct was to resist because the only other thing they had seen was slave traders. And other people also now fought their life, lost their lives when the railway has to pass through. Of course, we don't want to say that some British taxpayers paid dearly for this railway to become a reality. And therefore, as we wait to celebrate tomorrow, perception is what people hear and see. And you as the journalists are responsible for what Kenyans hear and what you, they see. We are inviting you to package this railway for what it is for us today and the future generation of Kenyans. Granted, the challenges have been there. We as a people have a debt to pay. And uh, I don't know how many people have built even a smallest house here without a circle loan. Of course, there are some inconveniences temporarily the citizens must suffer. But how do we present this information to Kenyans, to other communities, so that they are able to be accommodative of these inconveniences? They are able to isolate temporary politics of excitement from life-changing development projects. They are able to identify and own these infrastructural projects and ultimately they are able to protect these projects on a day-to-day -day basis because without these projects we shall do a lot of dancing on the podiums, we shall do a lot of politicking, but the cost of life cannot go down. I am not one of those who walks around preaching that we'll do this for women will do this for the youth, and those interventions are very critical. The most important thing is not what we like or don't like today, is what are we doing so that the cost of living, which is making you cry today, will not make your child cry tomorrow. It is projects like this SGR which will be there, I can tell you whether it is clear to you or not, or whether it is visible or not. Every Kenyan living today has in one way or the other had to take some sacrifice so that this railway becomes a reality. If His Excellency the President and his deputy and the political leadership of the day take credit, it is only because when Moses led Israelites from Egypt to Canaan, he himself never reached there. 
But the Israelis always remember the Jews and those who share their belief always remember there was somebody who liberated them from bondage, who provided leadership. But the ultimate fact is that in all this, every Kenyan worker, teachers have had to do with less pay, policemen have had to do with less pay because we are investing in these things and additional work because they must provide law and order along the railway line. The farmers had to forfeit land and so on and so forth. So let us look at this project for what they are. So that as we go to inaugurate the railway, there aren't groups of Kenyans, due to bad information, who see it as an opportunity for vandalism, who see it as an opportunity for grandstanding, who see it as an opportunity for theft and all kinds of mischief. Let us be able to package our development projects for what they are. And I'm saying development project because Food security has been an issue in this country for a long time. All we hear are shouts of corruption, corruption, corruption. Up in Galana here, up in Galana here, we have started a project which on fruition will add a million more acres of land in this country and amaze our staple diet. And we are not excited. The public is not excited. The public cannot raise up in arms today if they heard that you wanted to sabotage that project. It is because the information we are passing is wrong. We have been singing corruption is a social evil. But we cannot continue singing about the negative things in our society to the extent that we become a negative society. Uh, and therefore, as we open this uh, standard gauge railway tomorrow, we have already had incidences of sabotage, incidences of vandalism. And one of the reasons is that the information we are passing to the community is not correct, the way we are packaging it is not correct. As I have told you, there are inconveniences to be suffered, but the government has put in a lot of measures. Even the rollout and implementation has a lot of safeguards in it to ensure that there is no massive job loss, that if you took a truck on loan, you are not going to suffer, and therefore everybody is accommodated in these projects Every aspect is looked into and ultimately it will improve what we see as our cost of living today. There are very many factors which determine the cost of living. There is many, many factors which make food scarce and therefore expensive and responsible governments must invest in projects like SGR, irrigation and actually continue doing so for some time so that we can reclaim the position of this country as a leading economy in the third world and certainly as a regional power to we can bequeath that to the children we are bringing up today i don't want to overstretch i will invite questions if any